Welcome back and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, my next guest, I mean, and you'll know I'm a really big fan of his professor of clinical psychology. He's a geopolitical analyst and always gives such a, an interesting and thought provoking uh, take on things. And if you listen or watch this show, you'll know that's what I'm all in favour of. Not just doing the easy peasy headline stuff, but really getting you to think, getting all of us to think. OK, so when I first heard his argument about the next subject, I thought, come on, that's a little bit over the top. We're talking about how the Supreme Court in the USA, how its immunity ruling has transformed the US presidency. So as I said before, I thought uh, a little bit over the top and then I started doing a bit of more reading than just the headlines. Um, and I remembered a few things. Now, last year, ex-President Trump said that he would be a dictator only on his first day in office in order to close the border. And that's come up. And I thought, nah. but here's the thing with this new ruling, uh, six of the conservative Trump appointed judges were in favor, but one of the dissenters, Liberal Justice Sonia Sotomayor, she forcefully rejected the ruling. She said, and listen very carefully to this, the President of the United States is the most powerful person in the country and possibly in the world. Uh, when he uses his official powers in any way under the majority, under this majority's reasoning, what is now law, he will now be insulated from criminal prosecution, she wrote. Orders the Navy SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival immune. Now, apparently there, there, were, there are many legal minds that say this isn't just hyperbole. Um, uh, let's talk about the uh, David Super, a law professor from Georgetown University. He says here the court says the president is still subject to the law, but they've made that definition so much narrower than it ever was before. These are certainly the kinds of power that are much more familiar to dictators than they are to presidents of democratic countries. And with that, that is where my next guest comes in. As I said before, uh, a brilliant professor of clinical psychology and ge uh, geopolitical analyst, Sam Vaknin, joins me now. Sam, thank you so much for joining me. As I said, it only took a little bit of digging to see that political minds are saying, whoa, this sets a whole new precedent where it starts is a big chipping away at democracy and it started to slowly but surely usher in the ground rules for dictatorship yes first of all it's wonderful to see you regardless of <laughs> regardless of circumstances i'm more of a clinical psychologist so I would like to focus on the psychology of the process because mm. there's been a lot about the suborning and compromising of the Supreme Court as an institution. Trust in the Supreme Court is at an all time low. Um, about 25% of the population trust it, 75% do not, and so on and so forth. But I would like to focus today on the bigger picture with your kind permission. Mm. Yes, the please. Big, big, Bigger picture has to do with the Republican Party. The Republican Party has identified a problem and is proposing a solution, which is what parties should do. And the problem, according to the Republican Party, is the Democratic Party and the bicoastal progressive liberal intellectuals, which are the coterie and the fundament of the Democratic Party. Now, that's the problem, the intellectuals and the politicians of the Democratic Party. The solution is very simple. The solution is what the Republicans call, or at least the Heritage Foundation calls, the second American revolution. And it is as ominous as it sounds, because the Republicans are warning that any attempt to oppose the second American revolution will end in bloodshed. This was what the president of the Heritage Foundation said only two, three days ago. Now, what, what Allow me, with, with your permission, allow me to elaborate a bit on the problem and elaborate a bit on the solution. I hope I will not monopolize the whole the entire time. I'll do my best to leave you some space for questions. Apologies in advance. Here is what the Republicans are saying. They are saying the Democratic Party in particular 
and politics in general have betrayed the common man. It's, it's been a betrayal, an unfolding betrayal. Number two, democracy is a ruse. It's con artistry. It's nonsense. It benefits only politicians and the aforementioned intellectual, progressive, yeah. liberal, and so on and so forth. Number three, the Democratic Party is godless. It hates the United States, so it's a treasonous party. It's a party of treason. And it's opportunistic. It has no values. It mm. just pursues benefits and, and so on. Now, that's a bit ironic, because these used to be the messages of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party used to support the common man. The Democratic Party was used to be the protector of minorities. The Democratic Party used to be a protectionist party against free trade. And other Republicans have appropriated all this. And they've become essentially a rendition of the Democratic Party, only much more aggressive and, and so on and so forth. Now, the Gulf is unbridgeable. Yeah. The, two part, the two camps are irreconcilable in terms of family values, immigration, the role mm. of the federal government, the role Abortion. of the state, everything, the, the role of the United States in a globalized world. I mean, there's, there is not a single point of compromise or tangency. There's nothing in common. They have nothing in common. So this is the problem. Now, the solution is authoritarianism. Republicans think, think that and argue that democracy has failed. And it has failed all the constituencies and all the stakeholders. It has failed the common man, the average Joe of the, that I've mentioned, but it also failed um, the future generations, children. Yeah. It, failed, it failed intellectuals, universities that have become utterly useless. It has failed. Um, it has failed in terms of welfare. It has failed because it encouraged laziness and indolence, etc. So the failure of democracy is systemic. And when a when a system, an organizational system, fails to such an extent, in such a ubiquitous and all pervasive manner, the only solution is to repl replace it, a root canal work, to replace it completely. <laughs> And the only alternative to democracy is some form of authoritarianism. So the Republican Party now advocates absolutely and without any, you know, advocates authoritarianism. Now, they Sam, are let, using... let, me, let me just let me just jump in there because that's a really good point I want to explore. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, let's explore that. I'm with Sam Vaknin here, uh, a clinical psychologist, a professor, and uh, we're talking about the gulf between the Republican Party and the Democrats and the psychology of it and what it's leading to. Back with more in a moment.
across the UK on DAB Plus on YouTube on your mobile and on your sign this is talk Welcome back. I'm with Sam Vaknin, uh, Professor of Clinical Psychology and Geopolitical Analyst. Sam, just before the break, we were talking about that gulf between the Re Re Republican Party and the Democratic Party, and the Democratic Party uh, seeing that author or coming up with the idea that authoritarianism is the only way to go. This doesn't. This isn't just in America. I'm thinking back. People forget how this started. For instance, in in Germany. I'm thinking about countries like Libya. I'm thinking even about Iraq, pre, because I'm old enough to remember what came before. And when you get those gulfs, um, and when there's a perceived failure, and when there's that lack of trust in the very organization, like for instance, in this particular case, it's the Supreme Court to do, you know, after the, the, the you know, Roe versus Wade being overturned. So women feel, uh, uh, you know, isolated. When you get those, these kinds of conditions have happened in history before, and into that vacuum has always stepped a dictator or something close to a dictatorship um is 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 that what is happening again yes well it has happened in the in germany when there was yep. a, there's been a transition from the weimar republic which please mm. succeeded to please no one and antagonized everyone so there was a transition from the weimar republic to nazism and adolf hitler there was a much older transition from Republican Rome to Imperial Rome, from the Senate to the emperors. So this is not unheard of. This is not unprecedented. And it's charted. It's minutely charted in, in the history of humanity. And it's happening now in the United States. I, I would define it in psychological terms this way. The Republican Party is the party of conspiracy, while the Democratic Party is the party of anxiety. The Republican Party claims that there is a conspiracy. They claim that the Democratic Party and its intellectuals have hijacked democracy mm. and democratic processes in order to benefit themselves and to take over the population and impose on it alien values, values which are which a population rejects and resents. Mm. That's the conspiracy. Conspiracy, yeah. by the way, is grounded in a psychological pathology known as conspiracism. Conspiracism is a combination of paranoid ideation and grandiosity. I know best because I'm in on the conspiracy. I know everything. You know, I know uh, things you, yeah. don't, you don't know. And so, so this is the conspiracy side. The Democratic Party is the party of anxiety. They're very anxious because they see that the population is drifting towards the Republican Party. A process that is that has happened in many other countries in the world, for example, Hungary, uh, for example, yeah. Russia. So they see that they're losing the game, that they are the and and they see that the population is no longer committed to the consensus of democracy is the best system of organizing political affairs and reaching compromise. So mm. the Democrats are very anxious, and because they are anxious they are becoming slightly aggressive. They, are, they demonize the other party. And so we have a, a very pathological situation, a confluence of pathologies interacting. Now, the, the Republican Party clearly is driving at a situation of a one-party system, the incarceration of demo democratic leaders, the leaders of the Democratic Party, and yeah, the supporting... I was going to say which Trump's already flagged up. You've already yes. got the uh, the, the, the openly, loading up. He openly of the says so. Yeah. He's, he's quite open about it. Yeah. He's quite open about it. And, you know, when Hitler wrote Mein Kampf, people didn't believe him. They thought he was kidding. And they said he's a weakling. He's a weakling. He's, he, he, once he is in power, he will moderate. He will be, he will be okay. Other interests, such as industry and ju judiciary, they will yeah. make sure that he stays the line. But that was a huge mistake. And it's a huge mistake now. 
In the, the main activity of the Republican Party in the past few years has been the compromise and decomposition of institutions. They, mm -hmm. they have literally ruined the judiciary, including the Supreme Court. Yeah. They have undermined the presidency. They have utterly compromised the Congress and Senate, more, more, more the House. But they are undermining institutions because they believe that these institutions um, have been taken over. There was a hostile takeover by the Democratic Party, and they need to yeah. be wrenched out of the hands of the Democrats. It's a war. <laughs> It's a civil Sam, war, but in slow motion. Sam, let me ask you. Uh, 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 let me ask you. In you've got Biden. They call. It, I mean, in the over here in the states, they're calling it the old man versus the con man. So you've got you've got Biden saying he's going to cling on. He's going to stay. He's going to stay. One of the conspiracy theories. This is all. Uh, Obama wants to become vice president. In which case. Um, you know, if, if they're on a two ticket, if when Joe Biden can no longer carry on, um, you know, Obama gets another crack at the, uh, he gets the funds, he gets everything else, and he can be president again. And this is all about Obama and his ego, et cetera, et cetera. And they read all sorts of things into that. On the other side, with Donald Trump, he's quite open in saying, I mean, he's got all of these judgments, and later on, we're going to be talking about the legalities against him. He's managed to get uh, in Florida, for instance, instance delays and and all sorts of even the judiciary is saying some weird choices uh which will enable him he could be he will be you know if he becomes president the first president um who who is uh, a, a criminal basically and won't be able to even travel to so many countries in the world so in the actual personalities am i right in saying both of them are the puppets of uh, a, 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 a psychology of power at all costs? What, what is that psychology? Let's talk about yes. Biden and let's talk about I think, Trump. <clears throat> yeah. I think your diagnosis is correct. Uh, uh, the misbehavior and misconduct of one party drives the other party to escalate and to mis misbehave as well. Misconduct is contagious. Once the rules are broken, ethics are out of the window, Institutions are suborned, so there's no arbiters. There's no one to, to kind of uh, decide neutrally and objectively on issues. Once you don't trust anyone, once there's a general atmosphere of paranoia, and they're out to get me, and they are to take us down, and then, of course, the, the Democratic Party is likely to escalate and, and play by the rules of the Republican Party. They're likely to misbehave, and they're already misbehaving, in my view. I mean, I think, and many others think the same, that Biden should have simply left, should have, should have given his place to an, another candidate with much better chances to win. But now he's not doing this. And, and the behavior of the Democratic Party resembles dramatically the behavior of the Republican Party with Trump. It's becoming a, 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 a personality cult, in effect. Both of them are developing personality cult, cults. Yeah. Um, institutional processes break down in the face of authoritarian takeovers, and that includes the Democratic Party, absolutely. Thank so, you. So nothing so is left. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, there's so much more to talk about. It's interesting over here in the States, they're saying if it looked as it looks more in increasingly more likely that donald trump will be the next president again that state people are looking to state uh, like people like G uh, gavin newsom they're looking at state leaders and governors as being the power and investing in them so you're going to get that whole the states kind of no united states of america um and again we, we, we must talk about that in future about the devolution of people seeing it as our state versus another state we go right back before they're all the stars and stripes are on the flag we go right back to to state the fighting consensus. state the yeah. consensus and solidarity have broken down i want to make one yeah. last comment a single sentence i promise yes. europeans have much more experience with dictatorships and authoritarian regimes and the transition between democracies to dictatorships. I think yeah. Americans should learn from them. Rather than demean and debase Europeans and mock Europeans and ridicule Europeans, 
I think Americans have reached a point where they could learn a lot from the history of Europe and from European intellectual and psychologists. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I totally agree. It's been a fascinating conversation. It always is with you, Sam. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. Uh, Professor Sam Vaknin there. And as I said later on in the program, I'm going to be talking to brilliant US lawyer Mark Schnapp about the legal ramifications. Is it true what so, um, which uh, what uh, Justice uh, Sonia Sotomayor said that uh, orders from the Navy SEALs Team 6 to assassinate a political rival immune? Wow. Is that true?